Okay, thank you for joining us for Rightly Dividing the Word, the show where the Bible is taught in a plain and clear way for all to understand. My friend, we're continuing our look at the things that differ in the scripture. But before we do, as our custom is, let us remind you why we entitled this program Rightly Dividing the Word. In 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse 15, our Apostle Paul writes, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And my friend, it is that method of Bible study to rightly divide God's word, to make the right divisions in God's word that he himself makes that approves you unto God. Simply put, although all of God's word is for us, all 66 books of your King James Bible, Genesis through Revelation, are for your learning. You need to know them. But not every book of the Bible and not every verse in the Bible is written directly to us and about us living today. When you rightly divide the word of truth, you understand that it is the 13 letters of the Apostle Paul, Romans through Philemon, that speak both to us as well as about us living today in the present dispensation of the grace of God. When you read the books of Genesis through Acts, therefore you are learning, you should know them. But the books of Genesis through Acts do not speak to you and me today. They're, they're speaking to and about uh, God's plan and purpose in the earth with his nation in the earth in time past, the nation of Israel. When you come to the book of Acts, and we're gonna search out the book of Acts a little bit in this study today, uh, you come to the salvation and commissioning of Saul of Tarsus, the Apostle Paul. Uh, we, we will be taking time to look at Paul's unique, distinct ministry as we move forward. And you see his salvation and commissioning in the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts activities, actions of the Apostles. That's what that book is talking about. The Spirit of God through the 12 Apostles to Israel. <clears throat> and then uh, lastly, that one unique, distinct Apostle Paul, the Apostle of and to us Gentiles. Well, when you come to the books written by Paul, uh, right after the book of Acts, Romans through Philemon, uh, those books are what God is doing today in the present dispensation of the grace of God. We're going to see that God gave the Apostle Paul this present dispensation of grace, the information, the instructions for you and me today. That's where we currently live in uh, the, the timeline of Scripture. Now, when this present dispensation of grace is over, through the event called the resurrection, commonly known as the rapture, Paul talks about, where, where the Lord himself descends from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. That's uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18. When the Lord returns for the body of Christ to take us to heaven, that, that will end the present dispensation of, of God's grace where we currently live. There will be a continuation of God's plan and purpose with the nation of Israel in the future, in this earth. Now, the books of the Bible that explain that end, those last days uh, 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 where God's wrath will be poured out and the Lord Jesus Christ will come from heaven's glory and set up an earthly kingdom as promised. That information is found in the books of Hebrews through Revelation. Notice Paul's books begin with Romans. Romans were the Gentiles of his day, Gentiles. Paul's ministry is to the Gentiles, in particular, all man, both Jew and Gentile. Uh, and then Hebrews. Notice it's calling back the Hebrew people, Hebrews through Revelation. That's why that book Hebrews is named Hebrews. Uh, because once this dispensation of grace is over, God is going to continue his plan and purpose in the earth with the Hebrew people. That's how you rightly divide the word of truth. Now, last time we we ended the study by looking at uh, the first uh, recorded miracle of the Apostle Paul in the scripture. And, and, and in that account, we were in Acts chapter 13, where Paul blinded a false prophet, a sorcerer uh, named uh, Elimaeus, but his name was Bar-Jesus as well. Bar Jesus was uh, that term, Bar, son of uh, Jesus, Jehovah Savior, a uh, son of Jesus. He's a type of the nation of Israel, unbelieving Israel. And in, in, in Acts chapter 13, 
verse number six, we see, and when he, and that's uh, when they, Paul and Barnabas, and when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar Jesus. There's that false prophet type of the nation of Israel, son of Jehovah Savior, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, uh, the ones who had dominion over the nation of Israel. Uh, were, the, were the Romans, the Gentiles, Sergius Paulus, Sergio Paul, as it were, another Paul. He was a prudent man, verse 7, Acts 13, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Uh, what made him prudent, he understood uh, um, what God was doing, the timing of things. He was, he was with this Jew looking t uh, for, for the word of God. The Jew was supposed to be a prophet of God to the, to the world, to the Gentiles to be a go-between between, between the Gentiles and God, to be a channel of blessing uh, of, of the word of God to a Gentile. But this one, he didn't do that. He was a false prophet. He was, he was of Satan, we're going to see. And, 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 and this Jew, knowing the time, said, uh, excuse me, the, this Gentile, knowing what was going on, a prudent man, he called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. He wasn't getting it from the false prophet. He, he, he heard of the man of God, Paul, and he says, come talk to me about the word of God, what God is, is, is doing. And my friend, Paul is God's spokesman for today. When, if you want to know what God is doing today, you have to go to the Apostle Paul. And the way you go, that, go, go to Paul, the way you do that is to read his epistles, Romans through Philemon, to learn what God has to say today. Well, notice in verse 7, it says he, called, uh, he, he, he desired to hear the word of God, so he called for Barnabas and Saul. But notice what this Jew did. It says, but Elimaeus the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Um, instead of receiving uh, uh, the, the truth of Almighty God, that God was done with Israel for a season, and now his salvation was going out to the Gentiles in Jesus Christ through Paul, this Jew not only didn't receive the truth himself, he tried to withstand Paul. He withstood Paul and Barnabas, giving this Gentile the word of God. But notice what Paul does. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. See that? He's God's man. Set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety. That word subtlety, uh, that, that, that's related to uh, Satan himself, subtle one. And all mischief, you see that? Thou child of the devil. This man was an offspring of Satan in his thinking process, in his actions, his activities. He was part of the policy of evil. Thou enemy of all righteousness, see that? Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? He, Paul is, 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 is giving a description of unbelieving Israel and, and, and this man Sergius Paul uh, excuse me um, Bar Jesus Elimaeus the sorcerer is a type and shadow but he was a real man and watch what happens verse 11 Paul says and now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee and thou shalt be blind now watch this not seeing the sun now not forever but for a season the sun s-u-n and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. So now there's this mist, this darkness, there's this spiritual blindness represented by a physical blindness. This man was physically blinded by the Apostle Paul, but it's going to be a type and shadow of what happened to the nation of Israel, their spiritual blindness in this present dispensation of grace. It says, and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. So now this man's blinded. Verse 12, watch what happens. Then the deputy, that Sergius Paulus, that Gentile, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Notice that as God, through Paul, blinds this false prophet, this Jew, this unbelieving Jew, bar Jesus, type of the nation of Israel, son of Jehovah's Savior, and he saves this Gentile, this deputy, uh, this Gentile, this man believed and being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now notice that through this miracle, 
this man learned doctrine. My friend, every miracle in scripture is to teach doctrine, obviously mostly for the nation of Israel. Uh, even, even this one recorded in the book of Acts, the, particularly the first miracles of the apostle Paul, the apostle Peter, and even our Lord Jesus Christ. For example, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter number two, the first recorded miracles, this first miracle of, of the Lord Jesus Christ in scripture. John chapter two, at the wedding of Cana of Galilee, he turns water into wine with the six water pots and so forth, six representing man, water pots, human vessels. Uh, the, he pour, he has them, they're, they're bone dry, no, no spirit. He has them pour in the water, type of the Holy Spirit. And, and it becomes wine. Wine in the scriptures represents joy. And it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ through that kingdom, that marriage there, the Cana of Galilee represented the marriage supper of the Lamb, where the nation of Israel will be married to the land and get into the kingdom. The Lord's first recorded miracle in scripture, John 2, the wedding uh, at Cana of Galilee, um, um, making water into wine, represents his ministry. He's the Messiah who will give to Israel their kingdom, their earthly kingdom, there were, there were water pots of earth, uh, earthly kingdom, and bring joy. They will, they will receive their joy. Uh, the first recorded miracle of Peter, where he's at the temple, and he, in the book of Acts, and he raises the lame man who could not walk. It's going to be Peter, who is the head apostle in that kingdom program, who's going to take the nation of Israel as they cannot walk in the law of God. They can't walk. They have no power. And it's going to be Peter to give them the power through the Lord Jesus Christ to walk, get up, walk, leap up, and walk into their kingdom blessing. They go into the temple. Okay. Peter is going to his 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 doctrine, you see, you're going to see uh Peter is is the head apostle to the circumcision to the nation of Israel. He's going to teach Israel on what they need to do in order to get into the kingdom. The, his, his, his doctrine in particular, he, he is the head apostle to the nation of Israel. Uh, you see Peter's writings come after Paul's writings. Uh, the books of Hebrews through Revelation include First and Second Peter, don't they? Yeah. In fact, we're going to see as we go through this study that Peter, James, and John, those three men, Paul's going to mention them in Galatians chapter 2, they understand at least by the Acts 15 Jerusalem Council, we'll see some things about that as we go along as well, that Paul's ministry was to the Gentiles and their ministry would be confined, particularly to the Jews, those Messianic kingdom saints, those, that little flock, okay? And, and, when, and when the dispensation of grace is over, the books of the Bible, Hebrews through Revelation, where Peter speaks, James speaks, and John speaks, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and Revelation, along with Jude, uh, in the book of Hebrews, those books will be in effect in the future. The, the little flock of Israel, the, the nation of Israel, the Hebrews in particular, will use those, those books to learn what God is doing. And they were to believe that to be a part of the little flock, okay? Or to remain a part of the little flock. Well, here we see that the Lord Jesus Christ, his first miracle showed his ministry, bringing as Israel's Messiah, the joy of the kingdom. Peter's first recorded miracle in the book of Acts, it shows him uh, through his doctrine of Jesus Christ to Israel, giving them the ability to walk pleasing to God into the kingdom. Well, with the first miracle of the apostle Paul recorded, we see God through Paul blinding a, a Jew, an unbelieving Jew, and then his salvation, the word of his salvation in Jesus Christ going to a Gentile. Now, that's not unusual. Go with me to the book of Romans, Romans chapter number 11. Paul actually says that. In Romans chapter number 11, Paul tells us that that's his ministry. He was raised up by, Paul, by the Lord Jesus. He was saved on that road to Damascus and commissioned, given this dispensation of God's grace, uh, and, and to show that God is now dealing with the Gentiles, not through Israel's rise. Uh, it wasn't a mystery that God would deal with Gentiles. Uh, God always promised to deal with the Gentile nations, but through Israel's rise. The Abrahamic covenant through you and your seed shall all the families, all the nations of the earth be blessed. That was God's promise to the world. And he will do that in the earthly kingdom. But when you rightly divide the word of truth, what God is doing today, he's blessing Gentiles, not through Israel's rise, but rather through their fall. Look at Romans chapter 11, Romans 11, verse 11. Paul says, I say then, 
have they, and that's Israel, stumbled that they should fall. They stumbled at that stumbling stone, the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Did God do it so they might fall? No. Even the Lord says on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God extended them some extra time after the Lord's resurrection. He sent out the apostles and, 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 and other, other prophets all the way through to Stephen to give them a renewed opportunity to receive the earthly kingdom. That's what you see in the book of Acts, early Acts, Acts chapters 1 through 7. You see this renewed opportunity for Israel to receive their crucified, buried, and risen, glorified, ascended Messiah. But what did they do? Did the nation of Israel as a whole, you had a little flock, 3,000, 5,000 added to that kingdom church, but did the nation of Israel as a whole receive their king? No. When, when they stoned Stephen, the religious leaders in particular, when they stoned Stephen in Acts 7, that was the time where the Lord says, enough with this nation. And, and, and that's the point where Israel has Israel fell, Acts, Acts chapter 7. Paul comes on the scene in Acts 7, 8 and 9. He gets saved. God is now sending salvation out into the Gentile world, not through Israel's rise, but through their fall. And what you see from Acts chapters 8 on through 28, those 21 chapters where he, not, they now begin to diminish. Paul had a provoking ministry to Israel to let them know that God was leaving them. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. That's, we, we went over that. Notice in Romans 11, verse 11. Paul says, I say then, have they, that's Israel, stumbled that they should fall. God forbid. It wasn't God's intention. God didn't want them to, to crucify their Messiah, to, 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 re, to reject their Messiah. He, he was to die for their sins over that old covenant, but he was, he was going to die uh, by faith in the temple, not, not by uh, rejection on that cross. But God took that rejected Messiah on that cross and made it the, the most glorious thing in the world, the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to pay for our sins. But that wasn't God's original intent. They were to receive their Messiah and bind that sacrifice to the horns of the altar and sacrifice their Messiah on the altar in a temple as typed and shadowed in Genesis 22 with Abraham by faith, sacrificing his son Isaac in type. Well, have they stumbled that they should fall? Romans 11, 11, God forbid, but rather through their fall. There was no, God didn't intend for them to fall, but they did fall. They stumbled over Christ and fell. And what happened? Salvation, but rather through their fall, Romans 11, 11, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. So through Israel's fall, God sends salvation to the Gentiles, to us Gentiles, not through their rise, but through their fall. This was something that was not prophesied. God prophesied that through the, the nation of Israel, through you and your seed, Abraham, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. But that's not what happened. It was not through the rise of the nation of Israel, where they're the head of the nations and not the tail, where they're above only and not beneath. It was through their fall there in Acts 7 that salvation has gone to the Gentiles through Paul. By the way, the end of verse 11 of Romans 11, for to provoke them the jealousy. Paul's Acts ministry. There's a lot of question about why Paul did what he did in the book of Acts. Well, that 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 sh what, what what's recorded in Acts by Luke is showing the provoking ministry of the Apostle Paul to provoke them to jealousy. Now, when 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 you provoke someone to jealousy, you desire to get them to react and to and to get and to get their attention, to make them pay attention to you. Well, that's what God was doing through sending out Paul amongst those, among the Gentiles, because there were Jews scattered all around there in the Roman Empire, saving these Gentiles and any Jews who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Paul had an all-man ministry. Uh, Acts chapter 9, uh, verse uh, 15, Paul, Paul, God says to, uh, Christ says to Ananias, he's my chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now God changed the schedule up. No longer does he deal with Israel alone or Israel first. Through Paul, it's the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. God has a Gentile ministry through the Apostle Paul. Look with me at Romans 11, verse 13. For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the Apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. You see that? Paul says, for I speak to you, Gentiles. 
Inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Paul didn't magnify himself, but God, the Holy Ghost, through the through the scripture, does magnify the office of the apostle Paul. And my friend, you and I should as well. Uh, when you rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2, verse 7, consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 37, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, you think you speak the word of God or you know the word of God, it says, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 37, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. My friend, if you're going to know what God has to say, if you, if you think you know what God has to say, it better be what God has to say to you and me today through the Apostle Paul in the rightly divided word. That's why you need to rightly divide the word of truth. Paul says here in Romans eleven thirteen, 13, for I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Why did he do that? Verse 14, if by any means I may provoke to emulation, or that's to, uh, 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 to copycat as it were, emulation, them which are my flesh, those are the Jews. Why? That I might save some of them. The nation of Israel was cast aside. They were uh, cast away, not forever. Remember, remember the, the first miracle of Paul that we, we talked about uh, yes, uh, last time and to, the, today, uh, the blinding of that Jew. He would see he would not see the sun for a season. Right. All right. Well, we coming down to the end, my friend. Next time we're going to pick up in Romans chapter 11, verse 25, and we're going to see how that blinding of that Jew um, uh, what Paul calls it a mystery, okay? That blindness in part has happened in Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. That physical blindness of Bar Jesus, that false prophet, that sorcerer Jew, was a type of the spiritual blindness of the nation of Israel in this dispensation of grace. Uh, but right now, has anyone ever loved you enough to ask you if you were to die today, do you know for sure where you're going to spend eternity? Well, if no one ever loved you enough to ask you that, I love you, but more importantly, God loves you. And Paul, our apostle, makes it clear in Romans 5, verse 8, but God commended his love toward us and that while we yet sinners, Christ died for us. You don't have to move a muscle, pray a prayer, go to church, give a tithe, repent. You don't have to do anything to be saved, but trust the shed blood of Christ. The son of God, Jesus Christ, died on the cross to pay for your sins, was buried and rose again. Why don't you trust him? And my friend, if you did trust him just now, you're saved. You believe Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again. The only thing you're trusting is him and no works of your own. You're saved. And if you just got saved, let us know. Contact our ministry. We want to help you grow because whether you've been saved 20 years or more or just got saved now, the next thing on the agenda is you need to grow. You need to be sanctified in the word of God. You need to grow in the word of God. And my friend, we can help you with that. There's a church right here in your area, Sacramento County, that can help you. We study the word rightly divided like you heard today, and we build you up in your faith. OK, well, Second Timothy, chapter two, verse 15. Paul says to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. My friend, it was a joy to talk to you today. Until next time, I am Ron Knight saying, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.